engine. The crankshaft and connecting rods have been cleaned and inspected, and the various clearances between parts have been checked. The next part to be inspected is the camshaft. Examine the camshaft gear carefully for cracks. Pay particular attention to the teeth to be sure none of them show signs of excessive wear. Inspect the camshaft for cracks or nicks. Check the bearing surfaces and cam lobes for wear, scoring, or pitting. This camshaft appears to be in good condition, so you can go ahead with your measurements to obtain clearances. There are three bearing surfaces on the camshaft where it fits in the crankcase. The diameter of the shaft at each of these three points must be measured, and later you'll measure the bearings in the crankcase to get the clearances. Use the micrometer on these bearing surfaces the same as you did on the crankshaft. Measure in at least two directions, and if there's a variation, use the smaller diameter. Record the diameter on your check sheet for future reference. Check the center bearing surface in the same way, taking two readings at right angles to each other. Record the smaller reading and then check the diameter of the bearing surface at the front end of the camshaft. This completes your work on the camshaft, and the next step is to inspect the hydraulic cam lifts. Remove the tag temporarily so it won't get in your way. And look the tappet over carefully to be sure it's in good condition. Now measure the outside diameter of the tappet. Later, you'll measure the guide in the crankcase into which the tappet fits, so you can figure the clearance. The purpose of all measuring of clearances is to discover wear on parts that wouldn't be visible to the naked eye. Record this diameter on your check sheet for the time being. In the same way, inspect and measure each one of the eight hydraulic tappets. Next, check the oil pump parts. Examine the driven gear carefully, looking especially for wear on the gear teeth. Then inspect the drive gear and shaft. Place the gears on the cover so you can check the clearance between the teeth and the cover. To make this check, use a feeler gauge as a go-no-go -no -go gauge. Use a feeler one size over the specified maximum clearance. It should not be able to enter between the edge of the tooth and the cover. Then select the feeler one size under the specified minimum clearance. You should be able to insert this one easily.
Make this check for every tooth on each of the two gears. These clearances are a check on the efficiency of the pump. Now remove the drive gear and measure the diameter of its shaft with a micrometer. Then with a telescoping gauge, check the clearance of the shaft with the hole in the gear case cover. Now put the plate back on and tighten the nuts so you can check for excessive play of the gears or for binding. If it's satisfactory, you can remove the cover again and continue your inspection. Inspect the tachometer drive housing and check its fit on the shaft of the drive gear. Inspect the parts of the oil pressure relief valve to see that they are in good condition. And finally, give the gear case cover itself a thorough visual inspection. The two halves of the crankcase are next in order. Inspect each case closely for if it fatigue cracks or other evidences of weakness. Note the studs particularly to be sure they're tight and straight and that their threads are in good condition. If the threads look as though they might be stretched, check them by running a nut down on the stud. The nut should run down freely and shouldn't bind if the threads are okay. Sometimes cracks develop at the bolt holes, so be sure to make a thorough inspection of each hole. Make certain that the parting surfaces are smooth, so the sections will fit together tightly. If you find any nicks, stone them down. The parting surfaces should make a tight seal. Lift out each bearing half from its seat so you can inspect both the bearing and its seat thoroughly. The seat into which the bearing fits sometimes gets cracked or worn, and the bearing itself is subject to scoring and scratching. However, these appear to be okay. There are three main bearings for the crankshaft, and three more for the camshaft. Each of these should be given a careful examination. The other half of the crankcase should be inspected in the same way. You'll remember that you measured the crankshaft bearing surfaces where they fit into the crankcase. Now you want to measure the crank bearings and get clearances. In order to measure the diameter of the bearings, you'll have to put the two halves of the crankcase back together temporarily.
To get accurate measurements of the bearing diameters, bolt the sections together by tightening the nuts on all bearing studs. Now measure the diameter of the bearings. Take your measurements in at least two directions and use the larger one if there's a variation. Now you can figure the clearance between the crankshaft and the crankcase bearings at this point. Subtracting, you get three thousandths of an inch. You'll find the allowable clearance shown in the table of limits in your manual. Your clearance of three thousandths is satisfactory then. Next, take the diameter of the rear main bearing, the one at the other end of the crankcase. Use the telescoping gauge and micrometer in exactly the same way and figure your clearance by looking up on the check sheet the diameter of the crankshaft at this point. to reach down through a cylinder port to get at the center main bearing to measure it. Otherwise, the procedure is exactly the same. Now you'll have to take readings of the three camshaft bearings in the crankcase. This is the rear one. Again, if there's a variation, take the larger reading. With this reading, you can figure the clearance with the camshaft by subtracting. Result should be checked against the table of limits. The center and front bearing measurements for the camshaft will have to be taken by reaching through the cylinder port. They must be taken, however, and the clearance is checked for each one. After removing the nuts, Take the two halves of the crankcase apart again so you can measure the hydraulic tappet guides. With a telescoping gauge, check the inside diameter of each guide. Take your measurements at at least two points in the guide, and if there's a variation, use the larger diameter. Now you can figure the clearance of the tappet in the guide. Check your result against the table of limits. Measure each of the hydraulic tappet guides in the same way, and make certain that all the clearances are within the allowable limits.
You've now completed all the checking of clearances for this section. And there's left only an inspection of the remaining miscellaneous parts. Remove all the connections from the intake pipes and take the clamps off the connections. Then inspect each of the intake pipes carefully for cracks and dents. New rubber connections are always installed at the time of an overhaul. As you put the old clamps back on the new rubber, inspect each clamp. If any of them are broken or don't work properly, new ones should replace them. When all the intake pipes and their connections have been put into condition, inspect the pushrod housing flanges. Check the parting surfaces particularly to be sure they're smooth. Next, go over each of the eight pushrod connections. Install a new set of rubbers in the clamps and discard the old ones. See that the threads of the tightening screws are in good condition. With this inspection, you've finished your overhaul of the engine and you're ready to reassemble the parts and reinstall the engine.